So let's learn a little bit more about friction. We understand now that it fights slippage. It tries to prevent the relative velocity of two surfaces. We also know the formula is mu fn, the coefficient of friction times the normal force. But it turns out that there are actually two types of friction. There's one type of friction when the two surfaces are not moving relative to each other, when they are static. And that is called, understandably, static friction. If the two are static, then the friction responsible is called static friction. And if the surfaces are sliding or moving, there's motion. Fancy word for motion is kinetic. So kinetic friction. Two types. Sometimes you'll see them called Fs and Fk, but usually we just talk about the two different coefficients. When there's no motion between the two surfaces, the mu, the coefficient of friction, is called mu s for static. And when they are sliding or skidding, it is called mu k for kinetic. It does make a little difference to our calculations though, so let's take a closer look. This formula, it turns out, is really only technically true when we have kinetic friction. If the two surfaces are sliding, then we have kinetic friction every time, and mu fn will give you the right answer for friction. But if there aren't sliding, then some weird things sort of happen. And maybe you've noticed this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here are the two books. They're at rest. The friction acting between them is static friction. If I pull, I can pull almost 12 newtons before it starts to go. But then once it starts to go, it only takes about 8 newtons of friction to keep it going. Back up here, please. What that tells me is that the static friction is actually bigger than the kinetic friction. It's easier to keep something moving than to start it moving, and that is because, in general, the coefficient of static friction is bigger than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So in general, static friction is stronger than kinetic friction. But there's something else that we need to understand. If I look at my books again, and if I come down here, I can see right now that the friction acting on my books, can you see it? Can you see the forces? They are, they're zero. How much friction is there on my book right now? It's got to be zero, right? Because if there was friction, it would be sliding because of friction, and it's not. But if I pull with four newtons of force, how much friction is there now? Four newtons. Can you see that? You can't see it, but you know it's there because the books are not accelerating. If I pull with six, friction must be six. What's friction now? It's zero. So static friction can't really be equal to mu fn, right? Because mu is not zero, we've already established, and fn is not zero either. So what's going on? What's going on, come on up here, is the simple fact that you need to remember that friction, specifically static friction, is only going to be as big as it needs to be. It's reactive, right? It hates slippage. It wants to stop things from sliding. It's only as big as it needs to be. And so how does that affect our formula? Only as big as it needs to be. Which means that if we're calculating the friction and we know our situation is static, then this formula will not give us the right answer necessarily. Okay. If I put in mu and if I put in fn here, I'll calculate 12 newtons in my book example. I'll calculate 12 because that's the maximum that static friction can do. But if it's not needed, it won't be as big as that. How do we say friction can be as big as that in math? We just say less than or equal. No big deal. So friction is equal to mu fn. But you need to understand that if the two surfaces aren't sliding, it will only be as big as mu fn. Once it is sliding, then it's going to be mu fn no matter what.